All right, welcome back. So today we're gonna get into what it took to get this house assembled, three-dimensional, painted, and shingled. That's all we're gonna do today because I think that's good enough in a day's work for you to get this thing ready and looking good that at least you can put it on the mantle in the meantime. And then you can come back and add any shutters, glass, doors, gutters, anything like that. One thing that I didn't film in this video that you're going to see is the chimney, but as I explain how I created the building, I'm gonna throw in a little bit of information on how you can create a chimney for your own. What I did here was I took uh, two six inch pieces of cardboard, which if you remember is the depth of my house so that it fits on the mantel place with a one inch margin in the front. I cut two long strips of this, flattened them, and went ahead and started figuring out the pitch of my roof. So I measured the height of the facade, and then from there drew a line. And then visually, I tilted back the roof piece on my facade and started to just eyeball what I wanted the roof pitch to be. Now, part of my consideration of this is, one, I want it to be somewhat authentic. Two, I don't want to be putting thousands upon thousands of shingles on this thing, so I'm going to reduce the pitch a little bit. The steeper the pitch, the more shingles, the more surface you have. Once I found that pitch that I liked, I transcribed it onto the side pieces, the depth of the house, and then cut. It was then time to glue. I'm using a tacky glue. It's a air drying glue um, with no heat processing or anything like that. But it does take a little while to glue. It's fairly strong. You don't need really strong glue for this project. If you're doing this with kids, go ahead and use Elmer's. But one thing I do use that I use in gingerbread making and other crafting that involves three-dimensional structure is sewing pins. Pearl-headed sewing pins, which are relatively inexpensive, are really great for holding long seams together in things that you don't mind having a little hole in. And of course, in this setup with this house, I don't mind that at all. Another thing to consider here is it's a little bit difficult getting the first side piece onto your house. Just be patient. Put glue along the whole side piece that's going to match up with the facade and roof. Then put your roof and facade piece on and pin as you go, making sure you're fixing it together in an appropriate way. It's not gonna be at a perfect right angle right now because it's gotta rest on itself on the other side while you're doing this. But once you have both side pieces glued and pinned on, you can then shimmy the house to make sure that it's all squared away. You can even put boxes underneath it to double check yourself if it's a perfect 90 degree angle when you look at it from the bottom. And I recommend you do that. I am opting to not put any floors or walls inside this house. However, that's very limiting in regards to decoration. I might revisit this at Christmas and add room so that I can put small Christmas trees, fireplaces, and other decorations in there. Much more like a dollhouse. Because once I started to light this, I realized that it needs compartmentalization for a design to make sense. While all of this glue is drying on the side pieces and it's pinned, and you can put this aside, it's gonna hold itself, it's gonna be fine. Clean up any extra glue spots and anything on your work surface. I went ahead and grabbed another piece of gessoed cardboard and I mixed my paint uh, for the warm brown cedar color that I wanted the shingles to be on the top of the house. So some of these houses came with slate roofs. In Europe, you see them with terracotta shingles. Uh, and then 
there is wooden shingles. Well, now we use cedar. So I wanted something warm. If you noticed in the footage earlier, I started testing out some uh, grays, some cooler grays on the facade of the house. So I want the shingles to be warmer, not only to counterbalance the house and the chimney, but also to bring some of the warmth from my fireplace mantle, which is stained in a warm brown, in a caramel color, up through the decoration. So, essentially what I'm going to do is keep it all neutral. And I didn't film this, but what I did was I threw in a lot of white paint into an Avion bottle and then started to tint it. If I wanted gray, I did complementary colors of greens and reds. And then if I wanted to cool it off, I would add a dark blue. I added maybe a dot of black to each of these, but I really did not want to use black as a tint for this color. So I play around a lot with blues and oranges to counteract each other because that'll make a gray and then greens and reds. I warmed up for the shingles the same gray by adding a lot of brown. So I didn't do a ton of color mixing there. I found a brown that I really liked and I thought it was going to mix well into the gray. The brown predominantly took over that gray color. But actually, when you see the finished project, the brown and the gray, even though one is cool and one is warm, they very much relate and flow together. I am painting the entire body of the house, the woodwork, the mullions on the windows, which we'll get to next video, uh, and anything else on the house, the same cool gray. Now, historically, the chimney would have been stone or red brick, but I don't want to add more colors and materials to this house. I want it to be very simple. I'm also not adding lines or textures to denote the wooden horizontal lines with the shiplap type wooden structure on the front. The chimney is going to be centered in the roof line and I created this the same way that I did the body of the house. I copied the roof angle cut two pieces from there, and then cut a front and a back where those two pieces met, glued them, pinned them. I ended up putting one piece of cardboard in the inside just to help the structure hold. And then I added two of my woodwork sliver pieces of cardboard in two different widths on the top to give it a little bit of detail to make it stand out. Most of the chimneys in this time period are very very plain and they're very bulky because there's multiple fireplaces in these homes and they're right in the center of the house wealthier people had them all over once i painted the cardboard for the shingles i decided that my shingles were going to be two inches long and one inch wide One thing to note is that when you do overlap these shingles, you're gonna lose some real estate. So you need to cut more shingles from a larger piece of cardboard than the actual size of your roof. So my roof was something like 12 inches by 30 inches long across the front. And I ended up using a piece that was about 50 inches long and about 18 inches high. I painted the whole thing first in the warm brown, I let it dry, and then I took a straight edge and a quilting ruler, and note here, here's a tip. The first cuts that I made, which were my longest and easiest cuts, were across the grain, against the grain of the corrugated cardboard, because that is a more difficult cut. Then each of those strips I took individually and cut out the one inch side of my shingles making each piece. Now this took a couple of hours, but the look is wonderful. <clears throat> After I had finished those pieces, I went ahead and started to mock up how I wanted them to lay on my roof. So I would put down a row and kind of visually try out 
uh, a third of an inch overlap, a half of an inch overlap, and what I settled on was a one inch overlap. So half of the shingle is showing. <laughs> half, half of the shingle is showing. It, half of the shingle is showing. Half of this. Half of the shingle is showing. Um, and to start at the bottom row, what I did was I marked one inch up from the facade and correspondingly took my quilting ruler and marked one inch up from there across the entire roof. I wasn't going to wing this. Every time I lay down a row of shingles, you can see I go right up to the pencil line. You don't need to eyeball this because this is on an angle, your eye's gonna play tricks on you anyways, and even when you do this with a pencil line, sometimes it looks wonky from where you're sitting. So tip your house up straight forward and check it every so often, and then you will have uh, a perfectly nice shingled roof for the top. So for the top, I took multiple shingles individually and cut them down by half the long ways. And that mimics the, the bent and snapped shingles that go along top of a roof pitch. Uh, and then I started from the outside and worked my way in towards the chimney. But that's about it. At that point, I decided to put it up on the fireplace, start thinking about my design for how I wanted to decorate this for Halloween, and also started to thinking about how I want to execute the window glass. And I will get right back with you on how to do that. 